Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. So, it has been a very relaxing and busy weekend that we just had. So on Friday, I was working on a recipe and that recipe is actually now available over at my other website, wholesomeskillet.com. And the recipe is for a gluten-free, paleo-friendly version of matzah. And this matzah is made out of cassava flour and potato flour. And so there's no wheat in it and all of that. Um, now it is not technically considered kosher because it isn't made according to the rabbinical practices. However, it is an unleavened bread, it's gluten-free, paleo-friendly, and all of that. Now, in case you're wondering what matzah is, matzah is an unleavened bread, which means it has no yeast, um, and it's a lot like a really big saltine cracker. Very thin, very crispy, and there's different types of them. But matzah is used uh, for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is kicked off by Passover. And of course, Passover is from when the Hebrew people were slaves in Egypt, and Moses went and told the Pharaoh to let God's people go. And when he didn't, there were 10 plagues that took place, and the 10th one being the worst that culminated uh, the entire series. And the people of God were told to slaughter a lamb and told to mark the sides and top of the doorway of their homes with the blood of that lamb. And they were then covered by the blood. And then when God came through there, he would pass over the homes with the blood and he would spare those houses. And the people were told to cook the lamb, eat the lamb with their shoes on their feet, their coats on and, and cinched and packed up, ready to go. They had bitter herbs, they had unleavened bread because there was not gonna be any time to let the bread rise, and then the lamb. And when Pharaoh told them to get out, they left. And from that point forward, Passover and unleavened bread have been a feast, or a pair of feasts that have been remembered um, throughout time. In Exodus, um, in chapter 12, it says, Therefore you are to observe this day from generation to generation by a perpetual regulation from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 21st day. You are to eat matzah. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. During those seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. Whoever eats food with hummets, leavening, in it is to be cut off from the community of Israel. It doesn't matter whether he's a foreigner or a citizen of the land, eat nothing with hummets in it. Wherever you live, eat matzah. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, get rid of the old hummets so that you can be a new batch of dough because in reality you are unleavened. For our Pesach Passover lamb, the Messiah has been sacrificed. And so because of that, I do Passover and unleavened bread and matzah is a big part of that. And I do use store-bought matzah at times, but I do also like to make my own. And I have a recipe on my main website uh, that uses a variety of different flours, but it is not a gluten-free version. And so over at Wholesome Skillet, I shared the paleo-friendly gluten-free variety. And it's really simple to make, although the, the dough is very, very fragile. And so if you are wanting to do Passover and you wanna have paleo-friendly matzah, then this is a good recipe for it. It uses one cup of cassava flour. One cup of potato flour. You add in a pinch of salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon, along with a tablespoon of honey, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and then three quarters of a cup of water, plus a little bit more. You're gonna mix those all together, and you're just gonna add a little bit of water, additional water at a time, to get to where all of your flowers are moistened, and it all comes together in a firm but not sticky dough. 
and once you have created that dough you're going to divide the lump of dough into four sections roll those out as thinly as you can get them cut them into rectangles and you're going to carefully transfer them over to a piece of parchment paper that I set on top of a, a cooling rack. That way I can transfer it to my preheated oven and baking stone. Poke it with a fork all over to create the punctures in the matzah. And then you're gonna bake it for three minutes on each side at 475 degrees. And like I said, that dough is very, very fragile, but ultimately you're going to end up with a gluten-free variety of matzah that you can use for Passover. And if you would like that recipe, I will put a link down below to where you can find it over on my other website. So Friday, I was working on that recipe. Uh, Friday evening, we actually had a couple people come over to do a little pig hunting. Um, I've mentioned that we, <laughs> I've mentioned a few times now, we've had an ongoing problem with wild pigs. Um, you know, we had caught 12, dispatched a few of them. Um, some of them were taken away by someone who wanted to take them to the butcher. Um, a few of them were disposed of by farm services. And there were still tons and tons of them out there in the woods. Every morning I was getting up to more spots of our property that had been demolished. Uh, they were starting to mess with the goat fence. It was just an ongoing dilemma. And so uh, Friday evening, uh, two gentlemen came out. One of them is my husband's coworker. And they got their first pig within 10 minutes of arriving. And then that was it. Uh, there were no other sightings of pigs all night long and then Saturday was Shabbat and so it was a rest day for me. did my studying and everything I decided to go for a nice lovely walk in the woods and don't worry Betsy was with me because of course pigs
But you know, I actually went down to the creek uh, and walked all over the place out there and there was not a single pig track to be found. And so I went and I pulled the SD cards from all of our trail cameras. We've got cameras all over the place. And there had been no pigs. And so I came back in after I had looked at all of the SD cards. There was deer, there was bobcats, there was all sorts of things, but no current photos of pigs. So I took them back out, put them all back in the cameras, and I actually baited four of my cameras with some corn because if there's pigs out there, they're gonna smell that corn and we're gonna get them on camera to see if they're still in the area. Went out there today, checked all the SD cards, not a single pig. So it looks like potentially the pigs have moved on, which means they are no longer our problem, but they're gonna be somebody's problem. And they'll come back though. <laughs> Mr. Smith just hollered, they'll come back. They probably will. And when we start seeing them on camera again, we will let those folks know and they can come back out and take some with them. Now today, in addition to checking the SD cards and cameras and all that stuff, uh, went out there and did the first mowing of the pasture for 2022. Not the whole pasture, it was just a portion that always gets really thick really fast. So mowed all that down. There's an area out at the back of the pasture out this way that had just been demolished by the pigs. So I went over it with the tractor over and over and over again to just kind of flatten it all back out, pack it all back down and all of that. Um, and then I started working on thistles. It has turned into a spring ritual every year that I go out and I pull hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thistles.
And that is pretty much it. That has been our weekend. We had some friends over this evening for dinner and just had a nice time visiting and all of that. So that is it for today. Oh, one other thing. Um, well, he's not in here now. The new cat that I shared with you guys in the video the other day, I had several people asking what kind of a cat is he. Um, we don't know 100% for certain because you never really know when you have a stray animal. However, he kind of checks the boxes, every box, for a Turkish Angora cat. The type of coat he has, his tail, the coloring. And it didn't really show up on camera, but he's not 100% black. He actually has silver on his neck and chest and a couple different areas, which makes him a black smoke colored Turkish Angora. Um, so that is what we are pretty certain that he is. And uh, hopefully that answers everyone's questions. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me here again at the homestead. My name is Constance at a good life farm with the dogs in the background. <laughs> we'll talk to y'all next time.